Hi, I'm Ron Lawson from Dirt Bike Magazine. We're here at Sunday Creek Raceway. This is the Russell Family Ranch and also the site of the John Penton GNCC, which just took place here last Sunday. We're here to ride some 2024 KTM XCWs. It's gonna be fun. <laughs> KTM brought out four models for us to try, but the one we're most excited about is the 300 XCW two-stroke. That's the bike we're going to talk about here. This isn't just an update of last year's 300 SX motocross two-stroke. It's a different bike with a completely different purpose. KTM has a confusing soup of alphanumeric names for all its bikes, but just so we're straight here, this is the 300 XCW, the more trail-oriented off-road 300 two-stroke. Not to be confused with the SX or the XC, which are all-out race bikes. Those two bikes got massive updates last year, and they share many parts with each other. Now KTM has turned its attention to the Ws. That's a more complicated design task. Traditionally, the Ws have completely different suspension and power delivery from the motocross and race bikes. That's still the case. They are all based around the PDS no-link rear suspension. But this year, that frame was redesigned from scratch with PDS in mind. It wasn't like they could take last year's SX suspension and just remove the linkage. It doesn't work like that. The shock is similar to the one on the SX, but it has a different body and radically different internals. Now it also has a straight rate spring, whereas last year's PDS bikes all had progressive springs. It also has clickers that can be adjusted by hand, even the rebound adjuster on the bottom. There's even bigger news up front. The open cartridge explore fork is gone. In its place is a coil spring version of the exact air fork that comes on the competition bikes. This one has a closed cartridge, and now the two fork lengths are more or less symmetrical. No more split design with the rebound damping on one side and the compression on the other. Those legs are clamped in place by a new forged and machine finished triple clamp, unlike anything KTM has used before. The frame is new, of course, and is much more rigid laterally. KTM engineers also worked hard to isolate the rear suspension's stress and flex from affecting the action of the fork, which as you can imagine is no easy task, but should make the job of suspension tuning a little less complicated. As for the motor, it's a whole new game. Transfer port injection is completely gone now in the KTM line, replaced by throttle body injection across the board. If you're like us, you probably felt the greatest thing about TPI was the fact that it forced the adaptation of oil injection on the XCW model. KTM kept that, so you still have the little oil filler in front of the gas cap and you don't have to dig out your ratio right for premix. Transfer port injection originally came in 2018 and part of the rationalization was it was a means to have street homologated two strokes in some parts of Europe. That never affected the US, but now KTM has attained similar results with throttle body injection, which as it turns out, offers significant advantages for peak horsepower. TPI was smooth and great for trail riding, but the new system definitely has more bark. Along with the injection system comes an electronic power valve, which opens up a whole new world of tuning. So far, we've just scratched the surface as far as mapping possibilities with different combinations of fuel delivery, spark advance, and port timing. The bike doesn't come with a map switch as delivered, but there are two different maps pre-programmed into the ECU. Trust us, you should buy a map switch when you get the bike. Other updates include new bodywork and an LED headlight. To help us out with the testing, we brought Carson Brown out to Ohio. He's one of the most well-known two-stroke fanatics in the sport and one of very few riders who has scored national motocross points on a two-stroke. We turned him loose on the Russell Ranch and just enjoyed watching what happened next. Yeah. <laughs>
After a day of riding in the Ohio woods and on a grass track, Carson came back completely stoked on the 300 XCW. It's clear that KTM now sees the bike as more competition oriented than ever before. First on the list is powerful, but it doesn't hit uncontrollably down low. It's actually kind of mellow down there, even in the more aggressive green map. In the middle, it's far, far stronger than the previous version, and it revs out much further. Last year's 300XC cross-country bike is actually a more valid comparison. That bike was so closely related to the motocross version that it was a difficult bike to use off-road. In the green map, it was so aggressive and so abrupt that very few riders can make it work properly in really technical terrain. The white map, on the other hand, was a big step down. It needed something in between. And that's where this XCW power band fits. The green map is excellent for aggressive trail riding and racing, and you don't have to be Carson Brown to hold on. The white map for the XCW is clearly the trail riding option and might be appropriate for nightmare Ohio mud, which we missed by a few days. As far as overall handling goes, this bike is much racier feeling than it has been in the past. The frame is more rigid, the suspension is stiffer, and it feels more like a race bike. The actual frame geometry isn't that different. It's all about flex characteristics, suspension, and ergonomics. Even the PDS rear end is stiffer and stays up in its travel a little higher. In the past, there was a big divide between PDS fans and those who liked linkage suspension. Those walls are going to crumble. Even at speed, there's no real drawback to the PDS system, and you still get big advantages in ground clearance and weight. The new fork will also be a very big deal. It's completely different from the outgoing Explore fork. That was the most limited aspect of the previous XCW. It worked well at low speeds and that was it. Suspension tuners who tried to stiffen it up for racing found that to be a very challenging task. This fork is more akin to the exact Air Fork with the WP drop-in spring kit. It's more involved than that, of course, but in performance, that's what it feels like. If you drop the air pressure on your exact air fork down into the 140 pound range, you might be close, but the new fork doesn't have the defining characteristics that some riders object to. It's more stable through the deceleration and acceleration phases of any given turn and seems to have less stiction. In the big picture, there's going to be more overlap between this bike and the 300 XC than ever before. The W will still be the bike of choice for trail riders, but we will see more and more racers riding them in GNCCs and cross country events. It has the power and the suspension to be competitive in any type of race this side of a full out motocross. Our encounter with the bike was brief, but we have a 300 XCW coming for long term evaluation. And that will appear in the print edition of Dirt Bike Magazine, which you can still get on the newsstand.